Hello, my name is Sergian Verstovšek. I'm professor of medicine in the leukemia department at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Today, I want to speak to you about anemia in myelofibrosis. How does anemia impact overall survival in myelofibrosis? Anemia is an important factor of International Prognostic Scoring System, or IPSS. This is a risk classification of myelofibrosis at presentation. It is very important to understand the five factors that constitute the IPSS. It is age over 65 years. It is constitutional symptoms, specifically significant weight loss, night sweating, and low-grade fevers. It is anemia, hemoglobin less than 10 grams per deciliter, leukocytes over 25,000, and blood blasts. These are the very important five factors to assess at the time of diagnosis of myelofibrosis. We can then separate patients in four different groups, and approximately it is about 25% of the patients in each of the four groups. This is a low risk, intermediate one, intermediate two, and high risk groups, where the life expectancy is uh, adjudged by the number of factors present. Low risk group has no factor, none of the five factors present, with average survival of about 11 years. We contrast that with the patients in a high risk group that have three, four, or five of these factors, where the average survival is expected to be about two years. So anemia has a significant role in prognostication from the time of diagnosis. The next question is, what happens with patients during their life with myelofibrosis? Is anemia important as it develops during the life of patients with myelofibrosis? And the answer is yes. The IPSS can be applied during the life of patients with myelofibrosis, and then we call it dynamic IPSS or DIPSS. The same five factors can be applied at any time during the course of life with a little cautionary note. The development of anemia related to the disease itself has more weight on the poor outcome of the patients. As is shown on these slides, the anemia accounts for two points rather than one like all the other factors. And again, we can divide patients in four groups based on expected survival. There have been further refinement of DIPSS by including three additional factors. As we see on this slide, on the left side, three additional factors to a DIPSS that now we all together call the DIPSS plus include unfavorable karyotype, red cell transfusion dependency, and low platelets below 100,000. So in addition to just having anemia, hemoglobin less than 10, further transfusion dependency brings another factor that just uh, gives us a significant view of how the red blood cell count carries a significant risk of early death in patients with myelofibrosis. We can then apply that knowledge into guidelines on therapy and a risk assessment of patients with myelofibrosis. Recently, there was a publication of European Society of Medical Oncology, Clinical Practice Guidelines for Diagnosis, Treatment, and Follow-up of Patients with Myelofibrosis. It is a first step that we calculate the IPSS score when we see a patient with myelofibrosis. This will divide the patients in groups of patients with a low risk or intermediate one, for which we usually focus on symptomatic therapy or not. On the other hand, patients with intermediate two or high risk disease should be, if possible, referred for a bone marrow transplant as a curative option for these patients. If that's not the option, then certainly we look at the presence of symptoms and symptomatic splenomegaly, for which JAK inhibitor is indicated. If that is not uh, present, then anemia figures out as an important therapeutic problem. For anemia, there are several drugs that we can apply, and anemia along the risk that brings to the patients uh, with myelofibrosis affecting their life expectancy is a therapeutic problem because we don't have good anti-anemia medications to provide to patients with myelofibrosis. So as you can see, based on this diagram, 
Calculation of the risk score for survival, which includes anemia and transfusion dependency sometimes, as well as identification of anemia as a therapeutic problem, figures prominently in our management of patients with malfibrosis. In conclusion, disease-related anemia is powerful negative prognostic factor, both at the time of diagnosis and even more so as it develops during the course of the disease. Red blood cell transfusion dependency may further worsen patient's outcome if it is disease-related development. I highlight disease-related development because some of the medications that we use may worsen the anemia, and that is different than disease-related development of anemia. Due to its significant clinical relevance, therapy of anemia is identified as major item in current algorithms for therapy of myeloid fibrosis, along with bone marrow transplant and JAK inhibitors. Thank you very much. I want you to thank you for listening to this presentation. Have a nice day.